Canada's fire authorities have never seen anything like it. The area's strongest earthquake in more than a century. It's an explosive wildfires have torn through the island of Maui. Hello, my favorite English language learners. It is your favorite English teacher here, Amy Joy. And recently in the news, we have seen some very scary and tragic natural disasters, including the earthquake in Morocco and the wildfires in both Canada and on the island of Maui. And so in this video, I'm going to quickly review the names of some of these types of natural disasters, and then I'm going to give you 10 useful vocabulary words to talk about them. So let's go ahead and get started. So there are many different types of natural disasters, including avalanches, droughts, floods, heat waves, hurricanes, earthquakes, landslides, tornadoes, tsunamis, and wildfires. And if those words are new for you, go back, pause the video, study the pictures and take notes on them so you can really understand and memorize them. But what I prefer to focus on is how to talk about these natural disasters. So word number one is catastrophe and the adjective form catastrophic. And a catastrophe is a sudden and widespread disaster causing a lot of damage and suffering. And the adjective form catastrophic just means extremely bad, severe, and causing a lot of damage. So in an example, we can say, the earthquake that struck the region was a catastrophe, causing extensive damage to homes and roads. Or the damage to Maui from the wildfire was catastrophic. It was extremely bad. And word number two, to evacuate as a verb or evacuation in the noun form. And this means to move people or animals from a dangerous place to safety. For example, the government ordered residents to evacuate the area as the wildfire continued to spread. And word number three, aftermath. Now we're actually not talking about numbers, but the word aftermath refers to the period of time following or after a catastrophe. And this is when people deal with the consequences and clean the mess up. For example, in the aftermath of the earthquake, finding survivors and rebuilding homes was the top priority. Okay, and before moving on to our next word, if you are trying to level up your vocabulary, then after watching this video, go to my website, yourfavoriteenglishteacher.com, where you can find my vocabulary workbook that will teach you 75 advanced C1, C2 level words that I use as a native English speaker and that I think you should know and use too. This book will teach you 75 advanced words through readings, multiple choice quizzes, and many opportunities to practice. For each word, I've also included their relevant collocations and grammar points, so you not only understand when you hear these words, but you can also use them correctly yourself. So after watching this video, go to my website, yourfavoriteenglishteacher.com, and check out my book today to keep leveling up your English. Okay, let's move on to our next word. And word number four, aftershock. This is a smaller earthquake following a bigger one, and it usually occurs in the same area. For example, the main earthquake was followed by several aftershocks, causing further concern among the residents. And word number five, rubble. This refers to broken pieces of buildings, like stone, bricks, and concrete after the destruction of a building. For example, after the earthquake, rescuers had to clear away the rubble to search for survivors trapped beneath. And similar to rubble, we have number six, debris. Debris. The S is silent in this word, and debris refers to small pieces and remains of something broken, damaged, or destroyed, often resulting from a disaster or explosion. And the difference between rubble and debris is that rubble is more about the broken buildings, whereas debris can be broken pieces of anything. For example, after the tornado, the streets were filled with debris, including twisted metal, shattered glass, and fallen trees, making it difficult for the emergency crews to navigate. And word number seven is the collocation 
percent contained. We use this word when talking about wildfires, and it means the percentage or proportion of a wildfire that is under control by firefighters. For example, firefighters reported that the fire was 50% contained after several days of battling the flames. And word number eight is fatalities or the adjective fatal. Fatal is a more advanced word for deadly. So fatalities refers to the number of people who have died in a disaster. For example, the earthquake resulted in numerous fatalities, leaving a grieving community behind. And some common adjective noun collocations include a fatal accident, a fatal shooting, or a fatal flood. If you put the word fatal before a noun, this means that the accident, shooting, and flood were all deadly. People died in these events. Now, the topic of natural disasters is not very happy, but I would like to leave you with something a little bit more positive. And so I would like to share with you this quote from Mr. Rogers, who was a famous children's show actor. And he said, When I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, Look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. To this day, especially in times of disaster, I remember my mother's words and I am always comforted by realizing that there are still so many helpers, so many caring people in this world. And oftentimes when communities experience natural disasters, people will repost this quote because in times of hardship or grief, it does bring communities together and it can be comforting to look at the positive things when going through such a difficult time. So speaking about the helpers, I have a few more words for you. And number nine is humanitarian aid. This refers to help provided to people in need during or after a disaster. And it usually involves food, shelter, and medical care. For example, organizations rushed to provide humanitarian aid to the survivors of the tsunami. And lastly, word number 10 is rescue or relief efforts. And these are actions aimed at saving lives, providing assistance, and offering support to affected individuals during and after a disaster. For example, local volunteers and emergency responders worked tirelessly in the rescue and relief efforts to help flood victims. The volunteers and emergency responders were trying to save or rescue people and also provide them some relief and support. So their actions can be considered the rescue and relief efforts. Okay, well, there you have it. 20 useful words to describe and talk about natural disasters. If you found these words helpful, definitely go check out my website, yourfavoriteenglishteacher.com, where you can continue building your vocabulary with my new vocabulary workbook. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure you like it and subscribe to my channel so you can keep improving your English with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.